What's up guys, Virgil here for GRPG Central, and today I'm going to be giving you 7 beginner tips to keep in mind before playing through Nino Kuni Remastered. These also apply to the PS3 version of Nino Kuni, as the two are essentially identical content-wise. And before you click off the video, even if you've played the game before, stay tuned because I think a few of these will still prove useful to you. Anyway, on to the video. Tip number one, complete side quests and bounties as you get them. Side quests, or errands as they're known in Nino Kuni, are not all that hard to complete, and you get a ton of great stuff for doing so. Same goes for the bounties in the game. I recommend completing all the ones you can before moving on to the next area, if you can help it. This will also ensure that the rewards you get are still useful when you get them, and not weak because you waited so long to complete the side quest. Tip number two, get these merit rewards as soon as possible. Another thing you receive for completing errands and bounties are merit stamps. These can be turned in at Swift Solutions for a variety of bonuses once you have enough stamps. There are two in particular though that you need to be sure to get as soon as you can. First is the Jack Be Nimble reward. This is one of the first merit rewards you can purchase and will speed up your traversal on the world map. Get this one ASAP as it makes traversal across Nino Kuni's already amazing overworld that much more enjoyable. The other one you want to get is the Jolly Jack Tar reward. And this one is a little dirty. As soon as you get your ship, turn right back around and go back to the town you got it from as new merit rewards trigger at this point, including this one which boosts your ship's top speed. Just like the overworld one, this speeds up traversal and makes setting sail on the ocean blue all the more enjoyable. It's also essential for outspeeding enemies if you're not in the mood to battle. Tip number three, keep moving during battle. When you do get into battle, however, you'll want to stay active. You might get drawn into the habit of staying in one place and spamming the attack button, especially early on, but movement is critical in Nino Kuni's combat, most notably in the later parts of the game. By moving around, you'll be able to dodge enemy attacks, and certain enemies and bosses also take more damage when attacking them from behind. So play around with this, experiment, and always be moving around when relevant. Tip number four, use R2 and L2 for battle menu navigation. When in battle, you're going to be thumbing through different options between different party members and their familiars quite often. By default, you might instinctively navigate these menus by using the D-pad. While this is a perfectly acceptable way to play, you can also use the two triggers to navigate the menus, which is the way I recommend. This allows you to keep your left thumb on the control stick at all times, allowing you to set commands while you're moving around the battlefield. In general, I found this to be a much more intuitive way to move around the menus as well, but try both and see which one you like more. Tip number five, sell the Great Sage's Secrets for cash. This is the tip that partially inspired the creation of this very video, as it's something I didn't even do in my original playthrough of the game on PS3. Which by the way, I checked and you do get them there too. At first I thought maybe this was an addition in the remaster, but nope, it's there too. When you are finally able to capture other familiars, you'll eventually need a place to store all the extra ones. This is where the familiar retreat comes in. Upon your first visit to it, you are gifted with a special introductory gift, which includes three jumbo sun drops, star drops, moon drops, and planet drops, all of which are used for evolving your familiars much later in the game. The most important gift you receive, however, are three Great Sage's Secrets. These completely restore your HP and MP, meaning they are essentially elixirs. And just like elixirs, they're obviously too good to ever use, so why not sell them? Great Sage's Secrets sell for 6,000 gold apiece, and with three Sage's Secrets at 6,000 apiece, that adds up to a whopping 18,000 gold. At a point in the game, mind you, where you have around 4,000 gold to your name. Needless to say, you won't be having to worry about money for a while after you do this. Tip number six, steal from bosses. This one should be a bit obvious if you've ever played a JRPG before, but isn't it annoying wasting time trying to steal from enemies that don't have items? Well, lucky for you, I've already wasted that time for you, so I'm here to tell you what to steal from and what not to steal from. So, you will want to steal from every main boss in the game, as they almost always have something really good on them. However, monster bounties are never holding items and neither are nightmares, so don't even bother trying to steal from them. And for our final tip, tip number seven, search suspicious areas. Nino Kuni's overworld is very old school and has many carryovers from that classic era of JRPG design. While there aren't any great sages secrets hidden in any clocks anywhere, Nino Kuni does have its fair share of hidden treasure on its overworld map. 100 of them to be exact. Towards the later part of the game, you'll get a spell that shows these hidden treasures on your map, but until then, mash X on anything that looks suspicious or like there would be a treasure there. Nine times out of 10, you'll usually find something. Bonus tip, keep it old school. 
Nino Kuni can be a bit handholdy, especially at first. One of the handholdy elements is the guiding star, which always shows you where to go next in the story. If you want the authentically old JRPG experience, you can go into the settings and turn this guiding star off completely and wander aimlessly to your heart's content. For an extra layer of old school, you can also disable the minimap by clicking the touchpad, giving you the ultimate old school Nino Kuni experience. You can of course still bring up the full map by clicking R1 if you need to look at it. Bonus bonus tip, take a shot every time Oliver says jeepers. Julian. Anyway, that does it for this tips video. Hopefully whether you're a newcomer or a longtime fan like me, you're able to get some use out of some of these tips. If you are, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any of your own tips, be sure to leave them in the comments down below as well. Coming up next down the pipeline is of course the video review but I still haven't quite finished the game as I'm kind of taking my time with it and trying to savor it a little bit, so that'll be coming next week. I know I said it would be out this week, but I underestimated how long it would take me to get through the game, much less than write and record and edit a review over it. So yeah, sorry for the delay on it, but it will be out next week. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next video.